This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, today in the arena. Uh, a deck that I just have this soft spot for in my heart. A deck that just wants nothing to do but just blow up the board again, 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 and again. Call it Wrath Tribal. Wrath being an ode to the original Destroy All Creatures. That was Wrath of God. Actually, bury all creatures. It was a term, a very old magic term, bury, which meant the creature was destroyed and couldn't be regenerated. Regenerated also being an old, confusing magic term. A lot like indestructible. But uh, anyway, <laughs> that's why every uh, board wipe, every AOE, every destroy all everything from now on is called a wrath. And this deck has a mere 16-ish wraths with Four Ugin the Spirit Dragon, four Andu Inversion, which is eight mana to destroy all non-land permanents, four Doom Scars, of course, and four Shatter the Skies. If just blowing up the board could be good enough to carry a deck, this is the deck that is going to do it. Now, there's a lot of problems with blowing up the board these days. There's a lot of little indestructible creatures. There's a lot of haste creatures. There's a lot of Faceless Haven in the meta to punish you and make sure that damage still gets pushed when you tap out for your sorcery speed spells. There's a lot of counter spells. Doesn't matter. The way that we're going to deal with all this adversity is the way that any true master does, which is just go harder. You know, if, if banging your head against that wall isn't breaking it down, you are supposed to be banging your head against that wall harder. Everybody knows that. Anyway, for the Faceless Haven problem, we do have some Field of Ruin, uh, so it's not completely hopeless. And against the indestructible creatures, we have four Glass Caskets, four Skyclave Apparitions, and four Elspeth Conquers Death, a combination of cards you've seen me running again and again and again in uh, Standard here. So I'm sure that that's not anything new. So let's cover a few of the more interesting choices. There are four copies of Search for Glory. This searches your library for a snow permanent, which can be a land, a legendary card, which can be a Planeswalker or a Luris, or a, you know, or a Saga, which can be an Elspeth Conquers Death or a Birth of Melodis. You put it into your hand, uh, you gain one life for each snow spent. So if we have three snow lands to pay for this, we gain three life, which can help offset some of the tempo. And it's something to do when we don't want to put a creature on the board because we plan to blow it up anyway. So what does Search for Glory get? We have some spicy one ofs. We have one Luris. The thing with Luris is you can get Tome out of the graveyard, but that doesn't happen often. Casket out of the graveyard also doesn't happen often. The thing with Luris is you can have kind of the Merfolk Wind Robber effect where you're getting back a Soul Guide Lantern every turn for as long as the Luris is alive and just drawing some extra cards while hating on the graveyard. Or you just get back Birth of Melitus, hit your land drops, make a wall. So Luris isn't that important in the deck. It's just a neat one of to fetch with Search for Glory and get a little value in the middle of the game. Search for Glory can also fetch Elspeth, Sun's Nemesis. It's an escape card. It won't beat rogues on its own, but if you've slowed down their creature onslaught and you have like 10 cards in your graveyard, you were able to stop them before they went absolutely crazy. This card can be a good fetch. We can also fetch one main deck copy of Yorian, the Sky Nomad, to go with our one copy in the companion slot. So that's fun. But most of the time, Search for Glory is usually fetching a Faceless Haven to beat the opponent to death with or an Ugin to tilt them to death with. Then some of the other cards, Solemn, shouldn't surprise you in a deck full of Ugins, and Foreshatter the Sky shouldn't surprise you. One Legion Angel, because why not? Sometimes the deck feels light on win cons, and you need to get proactive. Maybe you'll draw your Legion Angel there. Something I really love about this deck is the amount of special lands it gets to play. So in this case, we get to play with four copies of Andu Inversion and four copies of Amiria's Call and four copies of Field of Ruin, and four copies of Faceless Haven, and four copies of Crawling Barons, and four copies of Castle Ardenvale. Our lands do so many 
extra things. And it's the joy of being a mono color deck without really tough mana requirements and a lot of ways to get more land in Birth of Melitus, Search for Glory, etc. So our lands don't just hit the battlefield and cast big things. When we run out of big things to cast, they go aggro or they can help remove the opponent's creature lands or they can crank out one ones like or they can blow up the world. It's a fun deck. It's the kind of thing that I get into that I don't know if everybody else will, but I was excited to make this video for you today. And on that note, I'm excited to dedicate this video to Inlexu, I-M-L-E-X-O-O, -O, the latest YouTube member at the time I hit record. YouTube members, you get access to all kinds of extra videos. I think I'm up to 15 bonus videos just made in the last two months. Uh, one of the latest ones is a pack opening from a collector box of Kaldheim. Also, the third episode of Covert Go Coaching, where I'm helping a newer player navigate the Doom Foretold matchup against a really good mono red matchup. Uh, that was a really fun video to make. So if you want some extra content, consider getting a membership, and you might also hear your name on the show and get something dedicated to you. Today, I'm going to pick up something in the honor of I'm Lexu that I've been waiting to buy for a long time. The Azorius Sleeve. A sleeve that truly fits my style. This one is in your honor. Thank you very much for being a member. Also, before we dive in and let the nonsense begin, I've got a quick little blurb, a plug, a thing, a sponsory thing to do. Zavi is a site I've been a fan of for a long time, both in the, U the US and their UK site. They have different international sites. And they just launched the Magic the Gathering collection today. I worked out a partnership with them. They're sending me some sweet apparel to model on stream in the future. But right now, you, they are offering my members 20% off the Magic Collection and 10% off site-wide. There are some promo codes in the description. Check them out. And they're giving me a little kickback on every purchase. So your purchase does support the channel when you use the link in the description and the comments. So go check it out. They've got sweet new Magic the Gathering merch, throwback merch, and current collection and collectibles. That is Zavi.com. So thank you very much to them for sponsor for uh, not sponsoring. It's getting me an affiliate link. That's what it's called. I'll, I'll get better at this stuff in the future. But basically, you can support the channel with purchases and you can get a discount. And I think it's really cool that they offered uh, the viewers of this channel a discount. So on that note, let's dive in. Let the nonsense begin. Here we go. Edo. 96 percenter. Should I be running a mono white wrath tribal deck? Ugh. Frog in my throat. A mono white wrath tribal deck in a world full of mono white aggro that is full of indestructible nonsense. Three faceless havens out of 80? All right, fine. The hard way it is. Black red stuff. What you doing? You, you, you stomping? You gonna bone crush me, brah? <laughs> they know me. <laughs> They're like playing around counter spells. <laughs> Let's foretell that Doom Scar. Here comes that 4 3. No? We're gonna play discard games? Okay. Uh, that can go. I'm trying to decide if I want Amiria's Call or the Castle. Amiria's Call can be untapped. Could also just drop off an Ugin now since playing it is very unlikely. <clears throat> But that was not cool, man. Not cool. Come here, Yorian. <clears throat> what happened to my throat? I was all set to record. I was like, I had done all my push-ups and sit-ups. I had done my vocal warm-up. And then here we are, frog in the throat. Unprofessional. Some would say unacceptable.
All right, get that little guy exiled. Are we gonna see a village rights? If so, you don't get anything when this dies. We do need two more snow lands as well. I don't know if we're gonna see any planes in this game. Just gonna be all fancy land. I don't know about you guys, I enjoy my fancy land. I'm going to attack if the opponent, or am I? Let's see, we have tap land here, we can't Yorian. Uh, if, if they block, I wrath. If they don't block, we wait. Okay. Let's see if they reconsider this. It, it is a very face-up play. When your opponent attacks in a spot like that, it can't be great for you. Boom! Here comes the boom. Unfortunately, they get a card from their scavenger, which is annoying. <laughs> oh, oh, am I boring you with my awesomeness? Is blowing things up not exciting? Are you tired of Michael Bay movies? All right. Uh, like that, I suppose. Well, do we need the Orion? I guess more so than these other things, right? I mean, the Orion doesn't really do much. I, I guess they have to kill it. Yay for discard decks. They're so cool. They, they do so much. All right, Field of Ruin. Maybe we will have a planes at some point. Sad Yorian. <laughs> Sad Yorian. Yorian. Also, what's with all your basics? What's all this? I can't Field of Ruin that. What are you doing with a Field of Ruin? Oh, good, we get to blow it up. All right, sacrifice a creature, three damage, no. Next turn, both players discard a card, and on the last chapter, they get something back. All right. So we field of ruin your field of ruin before you can field of ruin something of mine. Haha. We go get a snow plains and then we can power up faceless haven. We're working our way up on the mana. We're up to seven. Hopefully they don't kill this. Okay. <laughs> Take four. Each player discards a card. No problem. What the heck is our opponent playing? Just a very nasty deck, I guess. Alright, they discard another Nighthawk Scavenger. They play the Turd Grid. Okay. I know, very mature. So, next turn, get a thing back with a counter, and it gains haste. Do I take that damage to Doomscar that as well? I think I do. I think I go really low on life to cast a Doom Scar. Ugh. There's a lot of stuff in the graveyard, too. This is coming back as a six. Ten damage? All right. I don't think we draw. Actually, I'm not sure about that. Do we draw? Opponent's taking a nap, but whether or not we draw here is a big deal. If there's something we have to discard, they might get control of it. But we haven't hit our land drop. All right. YOLO. YOLO. Okay. Pretty cool. That gains life. And we can fetch a land. We can also fetch an ECD. We don't want to give our opponent the ECD. We can fetch a Yorian. We can fetch a Birth. I feel like it's just supposed to be a land here. We could fetch an Elspeth, but if we have to discard it, if the opponent forces us to discard it, that's going to be very bad. I think we just get a Plains, quite honestly. Or another Haven. Another Haven's fine. This way, Ugin off the top is a live draw. We still have the Foretold Doomscar. They can't do anything about that until we cast it, but we have to take 10 this turn. <laughs> and they gain 6 life. It's so mean. Alright. <laughs> They've got one card left. 
Let's play this immediately and not give them a chance to make us discard it somehow. I don't know what that would be at instant speed. I just know I don't want it to happen. By the way, when Sagas... This is any permanent, right? Yeah, so you sacrifice Sagas. If Teragrid's on the field when a Saga goes off, the opponent gets it, if, if I understand that rule correctly. Doomscar! Let's punch you in the face. The march of that lands. The land aggro. They're counting their mana. What? What? What do you have now? What nonsense do I have to go through now? How dare you? So much life. 31 life. It's going to take me a while to kill them. Another return. All right. So chapter two is each player discards a card. So we have to remember that when thinking about drawing with the tome. That's pretty good. Hi there. How are you doing? <laughs> you played yourself. That card is not that good. <laughs> Sorry, hate to hate to be the bearer of bad news. That card is this card is not that great. <laughs> that was epic. All right, so our opponent's going to get back a scavenger, so we're going to save a blocker. Should we save two blockers to be sure? If they draw a removal spell, they hit us pretty hard. And then if they top deck another removal spell, we lose. All right. I talk myself into saving two blockers. Ooh, land. Pretty. Come get some. No? All right. 1-1 one, one or draw? Draw. Search for glory. Well, we can get Yorian. We can get Lurus. We have birth in the graveyard. Not much else. No lantern. Uh, a soul guide lantern would make a difference there. We can get Elspeth. I think it's Ugin, though. Ugin can take out that scavenger. Oh, we can just get ECD. That, that's sweet. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I often forget about the saga thing. Aw, they're bored. I, I'm not here to help you with that. That's your problem. If you can't enjoy this riveting gameplay. If you can't enjoy just blowing everything up, including your face. I don't I can't help you. I can't help you. All right, it has a sweeper. Let's keep it. How could we lose with a sweeper in our hand? Oh my gosh, it's rogues. I am so surprised. A foretell rogue. That's fresh, I guess. Let's go get another planes. We do have a nice curve. And they're not Luris, so Elspeth Conquer's Death might actually have targets. Okay, no counter. Love it. Get exiled, little rogue. Wow, they didn't do anything that turn. What's going on? It's not the rogues I know. Blood Chief's Thirst on a Wall. Not enough cards in the graveyard for a Thought Thief to ambush this. So let's attack. Maybe. Sure. They must have just top decked that. Could
could buy the Yorian, and then we have it with the ECD. Or we just have a 4-5 to play and probably kick their butt. But I think we'll play the Tome and just start drawing cards and try to and grind them out even harder. Like their deck is not quite doing it, but we do have to be prepared for a Zareth San. They could flash that in on end step. Ugin. All right. So if we play the castle and just threaten to make a 1-1, the Zareth might have trouble getting in. What can it gain control of? I mean, these are pretty mediocre cards. They could get an apparition to try to target the tome. I think we take our time for at least one turn here. Uh-huh. All right. Okay. We see their last card and probably a saw it coming, which is unfortunate. If they are in this good position where they can counter every turn while getting in, then we're in trouble. Don't need you. Another inversion. How do we get rid of the counter? We could go for the Elspeth Conqueror's death. What are they going to get? They're just going to get, like these don't matter very much. But if they count, I guess if they hit Elspeth Conqueror's death, nah, that doesn't matter too much either. We could also go for the shatter. They counter that, then they get a thing, then we ECD. I guess I'd prefer the shatter resolve. We could also keep up this charade for another turn, draw another card, but then they mill something else, and that could be really bad. All right, I feel like we have to remove the counter spell. I think this is how we do it. Actually, okay, we're gonna do this. Oh, that resolved way too easy. Maybe that's not a saw it coming. Maybe it's like a raven's form. Okay. I mean, I would be okay with that. That's one of the beauties of a test spell. If you have a test spell to play, you can figure out if your opponent has a counter from how the arena client behaves. Haunting Voyage. So they get to return the rogues to the battlefield? That's another take on it. Let's save this to draw cards. We get the wall. So now we're set up much better against the Xerath, obviously. Go away. I think I'll just pay the three here and draw. Soaring Thought Thief joins team. Now they finally milled us up to enough cards. I think this is going to be number eight when we get hit. Yep. So they've turned on their rogue powers. We go for Ugin here. If the opponent counters the Ugin, we might get it next turn with the ECD. Opponent's pawing in the graveyard. Do they have another Xerath? It's possible. But they can't have a Xerath and a counter. That resolves. Kill them both. Opponent can draw a card with the Wind Robber. But we want both of them off the field. And we'll see if they have uh, something to flash in here. Nothing. What do you suppose the Snowlands are for? Just effect? 
They have drawn a lot of land, but we've also exiled a bunch of their creatures. This is not the rogue deck I feared. Lurry off the top. We get a solemn. Yay! Sad robots time. So there's a berth and there's a glass casket down there. We don't have a land drop for the turn unless we play an inversion. Let's go for Luris. We haven't given Luris time to shine today. Never miss a land drop. Luris. <laughs> Heartless act. Okay. Bye Luris, but you did good. You got me another Birth of Melitus, which is all a control mage ever wants in life, really. So much land. So much land. Where's those crawling barons? We hold the tome until either we want to draw the last card and gain the life, or buy Yorian to reset it. Yorian is looking nice next turn, by the way. Get an ECD. Get a Skyclave. Send in the Syad robot by the Yorian. Cast the Yorian! Blink the Blinkables. Pluses the Ugin. I know, thrilling narration. You don't have to tell me twice. We'll save the mana to draw a card with the Tome. We'll fetch the final planes from the deck. Doing it. Just trying to drive another rogue gamer to uninstall. That's that's the mission. If we can do that, it's another good day in the arena. Ido, I played you before. What were you playing? Gosh, I forgot. I'm not sure. Let's find out. <laughs> it's fine. Back in the day, in my try-hard day, I would uh, write down, like, in a spreadsheet or a notebook what people on the ladder were playing, because you played against the same people so often. Those days are gone. Simpler times for simpler gamers. Oh yeah, the black-red deck. The black-red deck, that's right. Alright. We got the best of them last time. Yorian goes big. It should be able to go big enough. Ooh, they could have taken an Amiria's Call here. Probably a good idea to take my cheapest card. We're going to need a land off the top. Our deck has like a million of them. This should be doable. The Scavenger returns. Oh, top deck casket. Get it. Into the box you go. I remember this deck really loves its scavengers, and it has ways to reanimate stuff. All right. This battle is going to end on my turn. Goodbye, Ugin. Just another eight drop in the opening hand. Sorry for your loss. And we're getting mana screwed. Feels bad. We might get Lily ultimated if we don't draw a land in the next two turns. Hey, you're the one who plussed. You should be able to make this decision. Erebos' intervention. And we draw in with Castle. Alright, we're in trouble. Oh my goodness. Come on, deck. What are you doing here? What are you actually doing, deck? So they go to 7, then they minus, and it says you get an emblem at the beginning of combat on your turn. Put a creature card from the graveyard onto the battlefield, and it gains haste. On the bright side, they don't have any creatures yet. It can be from any battle graveyard, but it has to be a creature. Okay. Well, <laughs> I don't know how we're going to beat that with cards like Doomscar. We're going to have to exile everything. Okay. Okay, guys. That's... I can't. I just can't. Cool. Cool. Magic. Cool. No. 
No. No. Nice to know I'll never leave 97% because the internet will never let me draw a fourth land sometimes. This hand is slow, but fine, I guess. We might get run over. Let's let's put it on the opponent. Can you run me over? Oh, they're mono red. Yes, yes. Uh, we're as good as dead already. This is mono red. They play mono red. Mono red. Fervent champion. Robber of the rich. Castle Embereth. Attack face till you're dead. I just follow the song. Don't try to act like you're better than the song. Don't don't try to act like you can color outside the lines and do something different. You can't. You're mono red. You have you have no capacity for doing anything original. It's impossible. Steal an Ugin. That's okay. I I didn't really want to draw that card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. Good game, everybody. How about me on the play not being mana screwed? How about that for a new uh, new plot twist to today's video? Okay. Okay. The universe heard me. The universe may have heard my call. I'll seed. I think it's the birth. The casket. I mean, they might sacrifice I'll seed to protect the next thing. But I guess if they play an aspirant, we go hit that and it's fine. I think getting a wall is a good thing. Wraths are not great against Mono White if they have Hollow Blade and Savior. They're okay against a few things. Interesting. We'll Casket the Luminarch in a minute. Let's exile the Bounty now. They might Maul the Skyclaves here, in which case, okay. They spent their turn doing this. It gives us time now to deploy Glass Casket for your Aspirant. Maze Mind Tome to start drawing cards. Next turn we can buy Yorian. We might flicker the Casket at some point. Brutal. Let's see what you do with it. The casket. Okay. And a savior. It's funny we have no board wipes against them so far. They put the counter on the aspirant. I don't know about that. Because that's obviously the target I want to remove anyway. Look at that top deck. We could take out the Sky Maul, but it's one of the only things vulnerable to an Elspeth Conqueror's death. I guess if we don't take it out, yeah, we do have to take out the Maul. Because otherwise they just put it on a creature and keep attacking us. Give me that. Stop growing your creatures for free. It annoys me. Now, can I have a turn? Please, to just draw some cards and live a good life. Eh? Maybe? No. No, you may not. Vanishing Light on the casket. Uh, we'll, we'll get it back, don't worry. Opponent just wants those plus one, plus one counters for life. Every day is about those counters. Do I need the land? It's not bad. I mean, Amiria's call is really good against them, right? Okay, so we'll keep this, we'll draw with Tome, we'll buy Yorian. K. 
Okay, the ECD is here. ECD can hit the Banishing Light. Get the Casket. Take out the Luminarch Aspirant. Again. God. Like, they love Luminarch Aspirant. They absolutely love this card. They love everything about this card. All right. So, they would get a 1... If we block here, they get a 1-1. One, one, but they just give it indestructible. Yeah, we'll block like this. Because we can still flicker these with the Yorian. And the opponent knows it, too. ECD, we can also flicker with a Yorian. I'll have this casket, please. Give me that Aspirant. For the third time, you go into the box. Um, we could attack, but no. There's there's Glorious Protector. There are ambush cards in the format. Sigrid, God, something or other. And there, uh, we beat Mono White without any board wipes. That's the reason why, actually. The reason we won this game is because we didn't draw Doom Scars. The Monk. Not a Monk, the Monk at 98% with a Yorian deck. Oh boy. So the question is going to be, do they play counters? Do they play ultimatum? Do we have a board wipe or like a way to totally clear them every time they play an ultimatum? I'm really curious about this matchup. Do they outramp us by miles? Like drawing solemn, solemn simulacrum would be nice. Hmm. None of the above yet. Let's play you by you. Maybe we just start cracking with Faceless Haven, although we don't want it to get eliminated or Heartless acted. Okay, cool. That can be Skyclaved. Although I want one for my, I want one of my own, please. It's only fair. They drew a tome. I would like one. Okay. No dice. Bye bye tome. You gotta love that they're two mana play. All it got to do was scry one. All right, all right, we start this dance. <laughs> That's a good play. <laughs> Let's do it. No ramp for you. It also taxes them for a turn, which is nice. I might even end up blinking it with Yorian just to tax them twice and try to buy time for Ugin. The chair. And they know about the Yorian! They're a maniac. They're an absolute maniac. Maniac status confirmed. They know about the Orion. Do we play the inversion? That this is the kind of matchup where you end up uh, casting inversion. But I guess with an Ugin in hand, I'm 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 gonna put it on the battlefield. We'll draw more. We'll draw more. Okay, I was half saying if they have a mystical dispute, that makes sense. I don't think it changes my play no matter what. But I was scared for a second that they were going to mystical dispute my Yorian. Get rid of that. Now the opponent is taxed. And ECD taxes again the next turn. We can make angels. Or we can hold the land for the Ugin. All right, buys Yorian. Says go. Okay, we draw land. We can make angels. I'm loving angels instead. Get him. Shadow's verdict or extinction event can wipe them out, but they're taxed. So they have to also pay the tax. And they have to wipe out their own tokens. And they're very close to dead. Remember, Ugin can go face. 
From the graveyard next turn, we do have a Skyclave Apparition coming back, which is no big deal unless they play something into it. We do have two Faceless Havens that can power up if the opponent wipes the board of tokens with Shadow's Verdict or Extinction Event on even. Although we can only afford to power one up because we don't have enough Snowlands. You're in! <laughs> Alright. Alright, gamer. I see you. Crawling Barons. Get back Skyclave Apparition. No target. Make it a 3 3. So I think we're playing Ugin after combat and killing the Yorian. They might have Heartless Act. They can play it here. The ECD tax has expired. No longer a real tax. Okay, eliminate, same diff. To go 90s on you, uh, on you kids. Bang. All right, opponent might be able to ultimate him here. But we have an Ugin on the board to clean up whatever the ultimatum does, including a Kiora Best the Sea God. All right, slam the Vorinclex. Interesting. Everything at the Ugin. All right, blocking like this, Ugin takes one, two, three, four, five, six, goes down to three. We can Doom Scar and keep our Ugin. We could also absorb all the Vorinclex with a double block. And then Ugin still takes six, so it's kind of the same thing. Are they dead? Seven, eight, nine, ten. They need an eliminate. It's five mana to Doom Scar. So we can still Doom Scar after powering up the Haven and going for it. See if we hit. Opponent appears to have left themselves dead on board. Pew pew. That went well. That matchup didn't feel terrible. Okay. Uh, if we draw planes, everything's awesome with this hand, and if we don't, we lose. Let's see what happens. I'm always down for some nonsense. Content keeps. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Back to 96%? Been there. Done that. The two apparitions really have to hold it down. God. This red deck, though, is just, like, you can't beat it with a control deck or a ramp deck unless you're playing, like, a million black instants and the exile removals. And even then, you can lose. I had a game the other day with Sultai where turn two Haven, turn three Extinction Event, turn four Shadow's Verdict, and I lost on turn five against Mono Red. Like, it just doesn't matter. Nothing you do really seems to matter. They just can, they can push damage no matter what with a good hand because of Faceless Haven now. So you gots to play creatures. Creatures have to hit the board. Skyclave Apparition's a good one. All right, they say go. We draw Elspeth Conqueror's Death. We gain two life. I mean, Embercleave is on my mind. We could search for glory, but I'm not even sure what I would get. Okay, they might have a Bone Crusher Giant here, and their plan might be to blow me out by taking out the Apparition, untap, attack with three things. But they could also just be holding up this Faceless Haven activation. How do we recover? I think we have to play the Apparition here and hope to draw a land for the Elspeth Conqueror's death. Is that crazy? <sighs> I 
I'm gonna risk going for Solemn here and establishing better mana. Because if we draw a board wipe, we're in a good spot. Well, one of the cheaper ones, that is. And this puts Doomscar on the menu. But I am concerned that I'm walking into a very nasty trap. Doomscar was on top. I hate that they give you that peak, man. It's savage. But it's one of the things about magic. Okay, the Skyclave didn't die on end step. I don't think our worst fears are coming true. It's just a dragon. Just a little dragon. And we, because we fetched with the Solemn, we actually have the ECD. And now we have a Shatter for next turn. Let's see if they have another dragon. Or an Ember Cleave. Uh-oh. 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 Uh-oh, gamers. All right, well, we're going to basically foretell this wrath by blocking everything in a way that is not very good for us, but definitely makes their Ember Cleave a little worse because we absorb as much damage as we possibly can on the largest creature. We need to draw some Field of Ruins. We really need to draw some Field of Ruins. These Faceless Havens are just going to finish the job. This two wasted mana feels really bad. It's too bad. I, I God, I wish I, I wish they made a Field of Ruin that was a snow land. Okay, okay. They play Annex. They can sack the treasure to equip the Annex here if they want to. Whoa, they're going wide. Oh my goodness. Well, I get back Skyclave Apparition. Well, actually... If I blow up my own Skyclave Apparition... So what I can do here is I can Casket and I can Shatter. So let's get the Solemn instead. Keep moving the mana forward. <laughs> Feels weird, man. All right, we hit a Yorian. If we draw land, we can search up an ECD. That's savage, but we can Skyclave that. Ugin. All right, we're going to fetch a land here, and then we're going to Skyclave the Charger. Three life. Exile the Charger. Put the sword back where it came from. We're getting ready to Ugin, but we need to let the Annex out of the casket. Which is super awkward. <laughs> okay, Torbrand's on the field. That's good for us, because we get to do this. Good matchup. Like, this, this game has been exciting. Next turn, we can buy the Yorian. I guess we attack, uh, uh, and we can block a Fervent Champion. No, we can't. They have an Ember Cleave. Yeah, there's nothing that we would block, including Robber of the Rich. Two damage. Ow. <laughs> X -X. All right. So again, we have a glass casket here. We could play Ugin and just shoot the Rimrock Knight, but I don't think that's great. We're going to Yorian, so let's attack first. 
It is going to leave our opponent with some critters, though. This is going to get interesting. What can I fetch for two? I guess Birth of Melitus? Tap careful. Yurian! So we want to give our opponent the Annex, then exile it. We want the casket to be empty, so we're going to take out the token. So, uh, we definitely get rid of the cleave, I think. And then we take out the Annex, and then we take out the token. Or land. There's never too many land. So now the board is free to Ugin if we want to, because the casket is empty. We're way ahead. We might not need to, but... Yeah! Got him. 98% gamer. And we are back for the post-games wrap. Wraths aren't what they used to be. So much indestructible, so much haste. So many creatures that are lands, but also creatures. But, with the right draws and a little help from the deck, this, this pile can compete with the best of them because it has other exile effects like the casket and the apparition to get you through. And the end game is very powerful. Just almost every turn having an insane effect on the board like Ugin or Andu Inversion or Elspeth Conquers Death being blinked by Yorian or just getting in with giant crawling barons. I would call this deck fun, but probably tier 3 or lower. It's not here to break the meta, it's here to play a specific type of game. You will lose plenty of games because the cards don't line up and the opponents have the right cards. It does fold to a couple of counter spells and a couple of rogues. It does fold to an annex on time with no way to exile it. These are just things that happen. but. So much of this deck is what I love about magic that I can't resist it, so I hope that you will try it as well. On that note, another shout out to Zavi. Thank you very, very much for hooking up my fans with a discount on the new Magic the Gathering collection launching today. Head over to their site with the link in the description to support the channel. Make sure you use the promo codes to get a discount and check out some of the sweet new merchandise. And uh, thank you everybody who supports the channel or even takes the time to go visit the website through the link just for a few minutes, poke around at the cool things they have. Uh, there's a lot of great gifts, so share it with people who want to get you gifts. You have loved ones. Guys, this is such a guy thing. Ladies, this happens to you too, but I'm gonna speak to the 97% audience of guys for a quick second. You have loved ones. They want to buy you things that you like. But what do you always say every time when they ask what they can get you for your birthday, for Christmas, for Valentine's Day, for whatever? You always say the same thing. Oh, no, just give me whatever. Guys, now you got an answer. Zavi. Dot com Magic the Gathering Collection. Use this link in the CGB video description. Try not to fall in love with the beautiful charismatic host. Just click the link quickly and check out Zavi.com, Magic the Gathering Collection. Use the promo codes. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. You're cool.